Boketov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Why Russia really has left Syria? That's a question that a lot of people have been trying to answer. We have actually avoided uh, trying to answer that uh, just yet because did not really know why. Uh, but according to some of the latest news that we have been able to, that we have just discovered this morning off of Israel National News. I think we know now why Russia did such an abrupt lead there. Let's look at one of the articles here when uh, uh, President Putin made this decision. It said, Vladimir Putin orders Russian forces to begin withdrawal from Syria. Uh, this was reported on The Guardian four days ago. Uh, it says the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has abruptly declared that he is withdrawing the major majority of Russian troops from Syria, saying... Uh, six-month military intervention had largely achieved, achieved its objective. Now, although <clears throat> no doubt his statement is true, we know that uh, President Putin has gone on to say that he can redeploy at a moment's notice to come back. And, of course, he did not remove the S-400 air defense shield and did not remove all of his aircraft or military personnel from Syria. But why, though, did he uh, seem to abruptly make the decision to pull out. There was no previous announcement of any kind. The next thing we know, as it states in The Guardian and many other news sources, is that he does this abruptly. It seems to be kind of odd. Well, I don't think it's so odd in light of what's going on in Norway at this very moment. American European Shield. According to the Israel National News on March the 18th, which is today, 2016, a rare inside look at U.S forces leading multinational drills as they prepare for the possibility of a fierce air war in European skies. That's kind of interesting that Israel National News posts this article here. Now they're doing it about a refueling tanker from the United States that's participating in this air exercise uh, that is taking place uh, in Norway right now, and of course we see that Canada, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Latvia, the Netherlands, Poland, Spain, Sweden, the USA, United Kingdom, and Norway are all participating in this exercise. And it's not just an air exercise with fighters and bombers. This is ground, sea, everything. I think that uh, Vladimir Putin no doubt perceived this as a possible threat, just like North Korea with the United States and its South Korean uh, partners did their massive drill uh, recently, uh, doing their drill based on a fallen North Korean nation. Now, of course, North Korea, I can certainly see why the United States and South Korea would do those drills, because there is a real threat when you have a rogue nation like North Korea threaten everyone with nuclear annihilation. Russia, though, has not out there threatening the United States. Although, regarding Crimea, uh, Russia did say when the United States was very much involved in the collapse of the Ukraine that they would, in fact, if needed, use nuclear weapons if the if this situation did warrant. So there is that threat as well with Russia, but Russia doesn't seem to be out there trying to threaten NATO. Russia just seems to be protecting its own allies and interests, such as in Crimea, where the nation, 95%, are Russians. And of course, the country was under Russian, uh, the Russian Empire all the way up until, I believe, 1954. So uh, there's a lot of things that people don't know that goes on in the background in, the, in these situations. Anyway, according to Israel National News, one of the little quotes in this article says, Our mission today is to support the cold response exercise, which is what it's named. We'll be flying to the northern tip of Norway and refueling a variety of aircraft directed our way. This year, as the following nations participate in the cold response, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Latvia, the Netherlands, Poland, Spain, Sweden, the USA, United Kingdom, and Norway. In addition, there are several participating units from NATO. Uh, this is one massive drill. Even on the Business Insider on March 3rd that spoke about this, 2016, the stunning images of the massive multinational military exercise in Europe's far north. Norway is currently playing host to a massive multinational exercise that is meant to enhance the military organization's collective response and capabilities hosted in Norway's central region. Cold response is an annual military exercise. This year, 
The exercise will be comprised of 15,000 personnel from over 10 countries. Some of the countries participating are NATO members, Canada, France, and non-NATO countries, Sweden. The U.S. contribution to the Cold Response 2016 include tanks, mobile artillery, special operations units, etc. So the issue is, and of course we do know that Putin did withdraw his um, military there. At least the announcement was made a little bit after I believe this exercise actually had begun. But was there something during this exercise that concerned him enough to actually bring home some of his military there a fear of a possible preemptive strike from NATO. Now, of course, that's only a suggestion. We cannot say for sure if this is the case, but it could be the reason why Vladimir Putin brought part of his uh, forces back from Syria. There may be that concern that something could have actually taken place or possibility. Or is it the fact that President Putin is only re-gearing up, re-strengthening his resolve in the fight in the Middle East. Only time will tell on that. Also, another issue here, here I'd like to also bring up, and that is the story we did on Michelle Bachman as far as from the biblical perspective. Uh, Michelle did write me and uh, wrote me regarding uh, the video, mainly the part about being quoted that Obama is the Antichrist uh, and that uh, uh, she did want to correct that she'd been to Israel more than four times, about a dozen times. Uh, but we had taken the story from Raw Story by Travis Getty. Uh, does, I will have to say, though, uh, Travis does seem to be very much against her, and yet there are a number of articles out there. This is only one of many where they are suggesting that Michelle Bachman is actually uh, making Obama as the biblical antichrist. As it states in here, Travis' article here, the implication, of course, is that Obama is the biblical antichrist a suggestion Bachman herself has made before. Now, this is what they claim. Uh, I do believe Michelle, though, over the uh, over Travis Getty in his response there, this is what uh, Michelle wrote me uh, just yesterday. It says, in response to the article, we used former Congressman, this is my response here, Congressman woman Michelle Bachman stated in an email to us, she said to, to me, thank you, I did not say Obama is the Antichrist. In another email she said, I did not even imply that he is the Antichrist. Uh, I've been to Israel a dozen times. I've been a strong defender of Israel since I was a teenager and uh, spent a summer working on kibbutz after high school. I believe the Bible is true. I believe those who bless Israel will be blessed the scripture goes on to say those who curse Israel, uh, she had actually put, I will curse. Uh, well, I guess that would be right. I will curse. Uh, I put the word be cursed, I believe is the way it is, but I think, I think she's right on that as well. I just put that in parentheses there. Uh, but anyway, she says, those who curse Israel, I will curse. So anyway, she just asked me if I would correct that part there in this particular broadcast for you guys that she never implied that Obama was the Antichrist. Uh, and I know there is uh, several interviews out there right now that she has done uh, relating biblical things that are going on. She does seem to be a very advocate uh, for biblical prophecy and those things there. Uh, but she did want to state that re regardless of what the story uh, has been written here on Raw Story by Travis Getty, she has never implied nor said that Obama is the Antichrist. So we do want to correct that uh, on her behalf as well that she does refute those statements there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.